Hello, this is Gene Jones. I'm with the Southern Waste Information Exchange. We're a small 501c nonprofit that basically assists industry and municipalities with waste issues. We kind of act like a matchmaker, putting waste generators in touch with potential waste users. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about agricultural film mulch collection and recycling and an overview of some obstacles and opportunities that are faced within this subject matter. I've been working on it since uh, approximately 1999 here in the state of Florida when I was asked to do what's called a technical advisor group meeting uh, for the state to look at why agricultural film mulch really hasn't been a sustainable recycling solution and uh, what are the problems associated with it and, and how can you overcome that. So hopefully this presentation will provide that overview for you. Um, the mulch film itself is basically used here in the state of Florida in the growing of tomatoes and strawberries. There's roughly about 35 to 36,000 acres of tomatoes and another five to 6,000 acres of strawberries. The amount of material that is generated equates to roughly 20,000 tons of mulch film annually in the state of Florida. It's managed in a number of different ways. The way the film is removed, it's typically pulled by hand, as you can, as evident in this uh, slide, you'll see the, the worker pulling the film by hand. And at that point, they will either drop it straight back down or pile it up. As an example of uh, the material being pulled by hand and then set in little piles. And from that standpoint, it is then either landfilled. Uh, we have a couple of landfills here in the state of Florida that have set up what are called monofills. So this view that you see, this raised bed that you see in the background is actually a monofill of nothing but agricultural film mulch. This is in uh, Collier County, Florida, in Mockley, big area for growing of tomatoes. And there's roughly about 54, 55,000 tons of uh, ag film mulch buried at this one location. The other way that it is handled, there has been some export of the material. Um, and so what will typically happen is the material is baled in the field. This is a tobacco baler. And uh, the, the farmers in this particular instance have used uh, the back of baler to bale the film, uh, compress it in the field, and what looks like a nice bale of plastic um, is far from it. This particular bale weighs about 1,500 pounds, and um, it's roughly about 74%, 70% soil. And it's hard to imagine that, but I'm going to show you some slides here in a few minutes that'll, that'll demonstrate that. I've worked on a project where we tried to enhance market development here in the state of Florida. So I've uh, helped farmers compile the material out of the field, and then we have sent it to a number of different locations. I've sent film to Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, Mexico, uh, all places, Romania, um, and several places here in the United States to figure out if we can't recycle the material. The other way it's managed is there's some pretty large agricultural stockpiles that are piled up around the state. Um, so you have some farms that have basically thought that, you know, there's at one point this is going to be recyclable, so we'll just set it aside until we have a time where somebody really wants the material. So you've got some, some pretty big piles growing up around the state, as I said. You know, the problem with once you start getting it into piles is vegetation is going to grow in it. That's a, here's a good example of that. So it becomes very problematic. Even if a recycling option is available, you're causing more problems with the intention was good to some of these farmers, but the, the problems are, are developing here by this instance. The other way that it is managed in Florida, and this is kind of hard to imagine, but it'll be piled up in little piles and the farmers will add a little diesel fuel to it and burn it. And what is left is uh, an example here. If you've got a burnt pile of bag film, and this is really just volume reduction for the farmers. They're trying to reduce the amount of material that they have to handle. So they'll burn it in the field and then deal with these piles of burnt ag film and haul it off uh, at that point. The other way that it is burnt in the field, I'm going to show you a quick little video of an automated way. This is actually uh, a unit that it hooks up to the back of a tractor. It's just a propane tank that hooks up to the back of the PTO of the tractor, and then they just haul it around from site to site. Uh, very useful in burning of the uh, polypropylene twine that keeps the plants up, but it's also used, if you can see, they've got two down burners that actually burn the film. This is the residual after they use this technique to burn the film, and then that plastic would then be plowed into the field uh, at the end of the growing process. The obstacle is soil. 
Here's an example of a, a photo of some shredded plastic. And you can see the, the soil that's incorporated onto that film. I wanted to see it firsthand. I've always heard people talk about the volume of soil on agricultural film mulch. And it's kind of hard to imagine because it, it looks like all plastic, but it's not. And so what I ended up doing is taking a sample of film. This is roughly 16 ounces of film uh, that I collected from a shredding process. And we went ahead and washed that film. And so I did a, a triple rinse process where we separated out, started on the far left-hand side as you're looking at this slide and moved it to the next batch and then the next batch. Um, what you're seeing there in the bottom of those first two uh, units is I've added a little flocculent to the water itself to help drop out, similar to what you would do in a pool, drop out those uh, solids that are involved in the water. So the sand and the soot, what I call micro dust, accumulates at the bottom of that. From there, I just boiled off the water and, and was left with the sand and the dirt, uh, and then we strained out the plastic and dried it. From there, we weighed the plastic. So this is the clean plastic, and as you can see, I've got 4.16 ounces of clean plastic. It had 8.46 ounces of sand, and then we had roughly an ounce of what I call micro dust, and I'll show you some examples of, of what that is. So total sample weight, 16 ounces. Net plastic after cleaning was 4.16 ounces or 26%. So we had a soil contamination and moisture contamination of roughly 12%, 74%. And below was the breakdown between the, the sand, the soil, uh, what I call the micro dust and the estimated moisture. If you look at agricultural film mulch uh, under a microscope, this is a view of virgin film has not been laid on the ground. You'll see a micro pattern woven into the, the plastic itself. This is to provide rigidity and strength to the plastic. So when they stretch it over that mound and then tuck it up underneath the ground, the plastic doesn't tear. The problem with it, this is the same film. Um, it has been laid on the ground and then pulled up after a period of time. And, and here you can see that micro pattern is still there but it's disappeared and it's disappeared from the standpoint of that micro dust that I was talking about. Little square area kind of acts as a suction cup. In addition to that, there is something going on from um, elect electrostatic charge uh, where soils have a negative charge and the, the plastic, I believe, has a positive charge. So you're having the soils adhere to the plastic. What you also see here in that top portion of the the slide, uh, that crystal looking item up here is actually a grain of sand. So that tells you how small those micro patterns are on the film. Another uh, microscopic slide, these are, these are sand granules. And then this slide demonstrates the micro dust. Uh, the upper portions like right up in here, this is actually a, a granular of sand. So in this area, this is the micro dust. So that shows you how small that material is. The opportunities that exist in this area. I think the first thing you need to try to do is to remove the amount of soil in the field. And so we've worked on harvesting technology to pull the film out of the field and leave as much soil as we can in the field. And that's done through, uh, I think, a combination of the technology as well as the methodology of how that film is, is pulled out of the field. What we've done is develop a process where we pull the film up either by hand or we have some automated processes, which I will show you. We leave the film on the ground for a period of time to allow air to get to that moisture that's on the bottom of that film and allow it to dry. Once you do that, you give the, some residence time in the drying of that moisture that's on that film, and you start moving that film after that point, a good bit of the soil actually falls off. And I'll show you some demonstrations. So this particular unit, we're rolling film out of the field, we're rolling multiple rows at a given time. And it, it creates what we call a tight spool. And so you can see from this picture that the material looks very tight, very, uh, very clean comparatively to, you know, some of the bales of material that you saw in some of the prior slides. Another thing we have done is developed uh, equipment to actually roll the film from the end of the, the row as opposed to going down it. And this is an example where you can actually uh, source separate out the drip tape from the ag film mulch. By doing this, you're actually increasing the value of the product, especially the drip tape, because it, it demands a higher price from a recyclability standpoint.
Um, we talked about a little bit about rolling the film, uh, letting it, this is probably a good example of us letting it lay in the row and allowing it to dry and then coming back and rolling it. We're, we're going to show you a demonstration here of a video where we're rolling actually 800 feet of film at a given time. And what happens is you'll notice from the slide in the video here, um, actually a little bit of friction activity going on, what I call friction clean, where we're moving that film across the the field, and by vibrating that film, you're helping the soils dry off. So let me show you that. We rolled that uh, 800 feet in about 20 seconds. Also worked on uh, technology to pull the film um, out of uh, the strawberry field. So here's an example of this piece of equipment. What we're doing is basically splitting the row. So there's a cutter in the front behind the tractor. And then we're pulling the, the film up out of the ground and then laying it back down. Again, our the, you know, methodology here is to give that film some time to dry before we start rolling it up. Here's another example. Uh, this is a different technique. This is a, uh, actually a rolling process. This was uh, a test trial on a zucchini farm in South Georgia. This piece of equipment hooks up again to the back of the PTO on the tractor. And we'll pull in, not over the row, but off to the side. You can see the amount of soil sand that's flying off of that film. Where the future brings, I think, is the recycling advancements are key. You've got to reduce the soil in the field. Um, mainly, the main reason for that is that you're going to lower the wear and tear on recycling equipment. And the other thing that I think is going to happen with some of these the fuels if, or the film, if you can't go into traditional recycling operations, there's a huge potential here for alternative fuel for the cement industry. The films have tremendous B, uh, BTU value, British thermal unit value, and that film burns much cleaner than coal. About 95% of the cement kilns uh, in the United States operate off of coal. And so a lot of the cement plants have an interest to replace some of the coal that they're using with alternative fuels. So I've done some experiments there, and I'll show you some additional slides. Again, I talked about the BTU value. You'll see in this particular case, this film had a BTU value of almost 15,000. This film over here was almost 22,000. The average coal that the cement plants burn uh, has a BTU value of about 12,000. Tremendous BTU value, great energy source, but when you have it with, in this case right here, when you have a mixture of sand and, and, and plastic together, where it's, you know, in this case, it was 50% that knocks the BTU value in this particular case down to 8,000. So that's lower than coal. So we've got to figure out how to reduce that soil to make it advantageous to use either for recycling purposes or as an alternative fuel. I ran a little experiment with a piece of equipment. My thought was is to try to figure out how can we shred the film reduce the wear and tear on traditional shredding equipment. So I, I came across this particular unit, it's developed by Tana, and I allowed, rather I should say, they allowed me to work a demo with them where I brought them some film rolls that we had collected out of the field. And uh, we loaded up that film and then dropped it into this unit. This unit was really designed for the construction and demolition debris arena. And uh, it's designed to shred materials that have a lot of sand in them, uh, it does asphalt shingles and so forth. So the initial test you'll see from this uh, worked pretty well. Dreads pretty quick in this particular screen that we were using on this shredder was a four and a half inch. Here's an example of the blades. What I noticed notice here is none of that film is actually wrapping. Um, and I was pleased to see that. And so what was left is uh, a good shredded material from there that you could then go to the next phase. And that is the cleaning of that film. Our next phase, um, that was just 400 pounds of film I shredded. I then uh, convinced the company that manufactures this unit to take it to the next phase. And we did a full scale trial, uh, some agricultural film mulch at a cement. So let me show you this. This particular unit and you'll actually see an up above picture of how this system works. Now this is a brand new shredder as you can see you saw the black rotor there 
uh, it's going to look a lot different here in a minute. Um, this particular piece of equipment um, is smart enough to know that when the unit starts to bind, it stops, reverses, and then continues on. As you'll see, as it goes through the process, it'll start to shred that, that, act, that film and then kick it out at the end on that conveyor. Uh, this particular setup, we're using a two and a half inch screen. So we're not reducing any soil at this point. We've got a mixture of soil and shredded bag film. But what's key to this is you can then take that material to the next phase, as I said earlier, where we can actually try to separate out the soil. Piling the material up, we convey into a, a number of different operations. You could either use this for volume reduction, or in this case, here's what I consider one of the next phases, and that is to run into a trommel screen. So again, we're doing two and a half inch shred going into a trommel. Um, if I had to do this over, I would use a longer trommel screen. This was a short bed trommel screen, so it didn't, uh, I think you, we would have more success in uh, separating out the soil from that film. As you can see, this is a, a short screen. If you had a screen around 20 feet, I think you'd be more effective. Now, what I want to point out here, which you'll see as this slide stops, is a separation of the film. And notice right down here, I'm going to show you the next slide right now. So the film's coming off, shredded film here. These are the lights. And then we have something going on right down here, right in here. All this is sand right here. So I, I prove my concept that we can separate out the sand from the plastics themselves. Now, there's still plastic I mean, soil in this plastic, for sure, no doubt. It has to be further refined. But I am dropping out a good bit of that soil. And that's evident from the sample that I collected from here. If you remember the sample I showed you just a few minutes ago where I did the washing process, I did the same thing with this plastic. I wanted to see the effect of the trommel screen. So I took some sample of it, 26 ounces, almost 27 ounces and from this sample, from that uh, picture that you saw above. I did the same thing. I did it in a triple, triple rinse wash. And it was basically just a hand, just mixing it around by hand and separating it out. So this is the first batch of water, second batch, here's the third. So you can see it's a lot cleaner than that third. I then screened out the plastic, separated it, I allowed it to dry, and then I took that water, and again, I added some flocculent to it, and then boiled off the water, separated out the, the sand and the what I call the micro dust, and then weighed. So for, I remember I had 26 ounces, so I now have 16 ounces of net plastic. In this particular case, I've got uh, 8.64 ounces of the sand and the micro dust. And by doing this, um, I, I showed the point that I can reduce the amount of soil um, by around 50%. If you do it close to the field, you use one of those mobile shredding devices. And so I'm going after a market enhancement project here in the state of Florida to do just that. That is take that mobile shredder, go to the sources of where those piles are, separate out that uh, good bit of that moisture or soil and moisture from the film itself, reduce the amount of transportation costs that the farmers are having to pay to get rid of that material. So if we can cut back the, the soil by 50%, well, guess what? I'm saving the, the farmers a good bit of money by doing that. In addition to this, part of this, this process is because the ag film mulch is, is produced really on a seasonal basis. So there's really two times in the year here in the state of Florida that it's produced. It's produced in January and in December, and then again in, in June and July. The other months, the piece of equipment that I just showed you could be used for tire abatement projects or, or storm debris, and for surely Florida and Texas have, have had their fill over the last, uh, last couple of months, this last month, with regard to uh, stormwater debris. So I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. I hope that uh, kind of provides an oversight of what's going on, and if anybody has any questions, please contact me via uh, my contact information here. Thank you for allowing me to uh, present, and if anybody has any questions, please get a hold of me.